2020, the fierce urgency of now. Thank you so much for joining us. Before we get started, let's have our language justice partners, Pancha Lenguas, walk us through our language justice access. Sorry, Maria Luisa, you're on mute. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Maria Luisa, mi pronombre es ella, y estoy aquí hoy con mi compa y cointérprete Judith, sus pronombres ella y ella. Somos miembros del colectivo de justicia del lenguaje Bancha Lenguas, basado aquí en Bulbancha, Luisiana. Y Bulbancha es la palabra Choctaw, que significa la tierra donde se habla muchos idiomas. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maria Luisa. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm joined today by my comrade and co-interpreter, Judith, whose pronouns are she, her, um, they, them. We are members of Bancha Lenguas Language Justice Collective based in Bulbancha, Louisiana. Bulbancha is the Choctaw word, which means the land where many languages are spoken. Hoy proveeremos interpretación simultánea de inglés al español y del español al inglés como parte de nuestro esfuerzo por crear espacios multilingües. Tonight, we'll be providing simultaneous interpretation from English to Spanish and Spanish to English as part of our effort to create multilingual spaces. To create this space together, please speak at a slow and steady pace. If you're speaking too fast, you'll see us make this hand signal, which means to slow down. Speak loudly and clearly. If you have headphones with a mic, please feel free to use them. We'll make this hand signal if we can't hear you, and we may also send a message to the chat. Keep your mic on mute when you're not speaking. One speaker at a time. Interpreters can only interpret one voice at a time and we don't want to be in the position to have to privilege one voice over another. Para crear este espacio juntes, por favor, habla en un paso lento y constante. Si estás hablando muy rápido, nos verás hacer esta señal de manos que significa, perdón, esta señal de manos que significa um, que hables más despacio. Habla en voz alta y clara y si tienes audífonos con micrófono, utilízalos. Haremos esta señal con la mano uh, si no podemos escucharte. Puede ser que también te enviemos un mensaje al chat. Mantén tu micrófono en silencio si no estás hablando. Y una persona a la vez, por favor. Los intérpretes solo pueden interpretar una voz a la vez. No queremos estar en la posición de tener que decidir cuál voz privilegiar sobre la otra. And now for the logistics for selecting a language once the interpretation platform is turned on. If you're using a computer, you'll see a globe icon at the bottom of your screen with the word interpretation. Click on that and select the channel with the language of your choice, English or Spanish. For a smartphone or a tablet, you're gonna look for three dots that read more. Click on that to make your selection. And when you make your selection, you'll see an option to mute original audio to hear only the voice of the interpreter. To hear the original audio, you may leave that unmuted and you can change your selection at any time. Y ahora para la logística, uh, para se yeah. Para seleccionar un idioma al encender la plataforma de interpretación, si estás usando una computadora, vas a ver el icono de globo al pie de tu pantalla con la palabra interpretación. Haz clic sobre él y selecciona tu canal del lenguaje preferido, inglés o español. Para teléfono inteligente o tableta, busca tres puntos que leen más. Haz clic para y hacer tu selección. Cuando hagan su selección, verán una opción para silenciar audio original para escuchar solo la voz del intérprete. Si deseas escuchar el audio original, puedes quitarlo del modo de silencio y también puedes cambiar tu selección en cualquier momento. Thank you for helping us create this space together. Gracias por ayudarnos a crear este espacio juntos. Thank you, Bancha, for growing with us. We appreciate all that you're doing. Hi, I'm Amy, Amy McCoy. Our pronouns are she and hers. I am the Oracle of Synthesis for Roots on Roots staff. I am an African-American woman with a light colored silvery top with a cream headband 
and I am zooming in from the land of the Muscogee Creek Nation, also known as Atlanta, Georgia. And my name is Melissa Cardona. I go by Mel. My pronouns are they, them, she, hers, interchangeably. I'm calling in from the land of Bulbancha, also known as New Orleans, Louisiana. The original people of here are Choctaw, Huma, Chitimaya, Adai, Kado, Ushata, Four Winds Tribe, and many more. Uh, my people are from Colombia, so Kigo Parceros. Um, I currently have a white bandana um, on my head, and then I have my hair loose today. And I have a bright floral shirt with orange uh, background, which I wear when I'm very excited. Alternate Roots is supported by the generous donations from our members, private individuals, and funders, including the National Endowment for the Arts, Ford, Mellon, Serdna, and the Doris Duke Foundation. Alternate Roots supports artists in the South US who are working to eliminate all forms of oppression. We invite you to be active in the chat stream. If you're having other tech issues, reach out in the chat and we'll have somebody assist you. Our gender equity group reminds us to all change our names in the chat with our pronouns. And now for our land acknowledgement. As you're adding your pronouns to your profile name, drop in the chat where you're zooming in from. If you know the name of the indigenous peoples who are stewards of the land you're currently occupying, drop that info in the chat too. If not, we invite you to learn more about the land acknowledgement. One website, nativeland.ca is one, but there are many. It's N-A-T-I-V-E-L-A-N-D dot C-A. Community agreements. Quick reminder, that's not, no matter how roots convenes, whether in physical space or virtual, we do so under the guidance of our community agreements. We'll drop the link into the chat for your reference. For our wellness, our wellness team reminds us to take care of ourselves while we're in this virtual space. So grab some water, snack as needed, take breaks and be good to your body during Roots Week. All right, that ends the announcement y'all. Let's get this session started. Today we have the Extraordinary Elders Panel with members of our Partner in Action cohort, Busi Peters and Mark Newsom. Can you hear us? Yes. yes, that's great. Okay, awesome. Hey everybody, we're so happy to be here. It's an honor to be here. It's a blessing to be here. Today is my grandmother's birthday, Georgia Bird Thomason, and she is having a heavenly Earth Day today. She would have been 101 today, so it's an honor to do this on this day. It's dedicated to her. And so it's a blessing to be here. My name is Lucy Peters Moore, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm the founder of WU, Women Healing and Empowering Women. It's a reentry program addressing the fact that our women have been outpacing our men going to prison and looking at other intercepting issues like domestic violence and homelessness. So we partnered with Mark Fury. I'm here in the Houston, Texas, by way of the Boogie Down Bronx. This is my partner. My name is Lucy Peters. So my name is Mark Newsom. I also go by uh, Mark Fury. That's my artist name. 
he, him, his. Um, and I'm a filmmaker, photographer, and I do a lot of public art and social practice projects. And I'm it's an honor to be partnered with Lucy Peters Mon to uh, bring this project to you, Extraordinary Elders. So the Extraordinary Elders Film Project, the purpose of it was for us to honor our elders, provide a safe space for youth to interview them and to make sure that their stories all too often do not leave with them. We are, you know, since doing this project, we have had three elders already transition and uh, other elder battling COVID, another elder who's dealing with Alzheimer's. So this is why it's so important for us to honor them, give them their roses while they can smell them, and show the importance of intergenerational relationships because that's at the cornerstone of what helps us as a people to survive. You know, going back to the show earlier today, to honor that we are coming right behind my big sister, uh, Tafara, and what the, the young people of youth were sharing were in the same exact mindset of the importance of intergenerational relationships and for our youth to know the stories, to know, you know what has been done for them, the things that have been sacrificed for them to be where they are right now, that we all too often don't know all the stories that our elders write in our own communities that, that are unsung heroes, unsung heroines, that we don't often know their stories. And so this is the reason why we felt it was so important for us to do this work. So it's been an honor to do this work. Just to add to that, um, I think this country focuses so much on youth and young people, which is fine. However, we want to bring light to the fact that a lot of our elders have these profound stories and have done these profound deeds during the time period that they came up. And um, we, you know, right now everything is so easy. We have apps, we have central air conditioning, we have, you know, all this and that. So we wanted to show the wonders of the elders that we've come across. Um, a lot of times, you know, when they leave, they take their stories with them. So we want to bring an avenue where people can hear these stories outside of, you know, seeing the elders in person. These stories can continue to live on. These extraordinary stories. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's uh, the reason why we're doing this work. We are looking to continue doing this work. This was the beginning. It's been an honor to be a PIA cohort and to get the guidance and support to be amongst the other cohorts who are doing awesome and dynamic work. And so it's just an honor to uh, be my, our first time group taking part in Roots Week. And so it's an honor for us to be here in 2020. 2020 has been an interesting thing <laughs> this year, right? But, um, so we're going to be happy for the blessings. Everything happens for a reason. And so we're happy to be here uh, in spite of not being able to be physically together. We're together in the spirit of all. So, um, We'd actually like to um, start showing a, like the first video and then we'll talk a little bit about it just to um, show everybody, you know, the progress of the project and show the experiences that we had creating it and, just, and really just exhibiting some of the elders that um, we got the, got the stories from. Yes. What I think is also about the project as well is that it's a, a nice selection and variety and diversity of the elders who some have more notoriety than others and have done some renowned things and, uh, and where there are others who are you know, ubiquitous and some of them never even heard of them, uh, yet they were heroes in their family and in their neighborhood and their communities. And so that's uh, another lesson, a lesson to, to doing this work. So with that being said, we can start the first video. Um, or we can keep talking. So his mother, Denver, that's probably going to be the first one. Um, she was an elder in the community that um, was a civil rights activist, um, has a very over-the-top personality. Um, and we've been wanting to uh, actually just
Sorry about that. So, um, have they started? I don't, I can't has the video started? It would be there. Though, this has has the video started? I'll show you the video. So, I need someone to communicate with us because we can't tell. We can't tell when the video is going to Okay. Come. All right. So, somebody's doing that for us. Okay. So, in the meantime, as we were sharing about Mother Denver, Mother Denver, um, even before one, I would like to step back. The fact that we both had this idea and didn't know it. We both had an idea around wanting to do a project that celebrated elders and unsung heroes. And then happened to have a conversation around it, that didn't, not knowing that we both had this idea. And so then we decided to collaborate and do this work together. Exactly. And so, um, so and Mother Denver, who um, is someone that I had a kindred spirit with, we both were from New York, both wound up here in Houston, um, so both wound up in the Gulch and Harvest community in Third Ward, Houston, a historic community, which is where Mark, you know, grew up at. And full of um, so much richness and history and culture here in, in, in Houston. It's, it's a, a treasure to, to um, have this community here in Houston. Yeah, we're surrounded by all these dynamic um, elders that have done so much for the community. And um, Mother Denver specifically is a very interesting character. You know, like Lucy says she's from New York. Um, and she has, wears this hat with all these buttons that kind of all represent something specific to it, like Black Panther buttons and, you know, positive Black sayings on, on her hat. And um, ironically, we, um, like Lucy said, we, we just kept talking about we want to interview her while she's still here. So the one day that we did interview her, it happened to be her birthday. And that's when we knew that this was like kind of some profound stuff that we we're about to embark on. Um, so we interviewed her and um, two weeks later she left us. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm looking at the chat and I'm seeing, are we ready? Because I mean, we were ready. Yep. So we're just talking. The video, because... the video is ready now. Okay, awesome. Right, cool. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. No problem. some of your favorite hobbies as a kid? I was always looking for a brown crayon to color my grandfather. I didn't have one in my box. And the teacher said there was three colors of human beings, white, pink, and beige. So I had to find a brown crayon, my grandfather's color. If you don't see yourself, color yourself in because black people are the beginning of the beginning. I also want to tell you that I, I also played the vi violin myself. You also what? Played the violin. You played the violin? And you didn't bring it with you for me to hear you? Well, when we have the next elders meeting, it would be so wonderful if you would come and play for the elders. It would just inspire me more. And I'm so happy you study the violin. And imagine black people invented it. If you could share with the world some advice, what would you share with them? I would hope and pray that I am sharing who we really are, that I am sharing our history, our struggle for justice, righteousness. It's a godly struggle. Tell me more about your daily routines. Are you working or are you retired? I work every day uh, because I wear this hat. I call it confronting the whiteout, coloring us in so police can stop killing us and other people. Lynch murders was a regular thing in America. What is your favorite fruit and birthday cake? Now, what happened, I went to Sunshine's and Sunshine said sugar is not good for you. And I came home, he said cooked food is not good for you. And I told my husband, we were married, about, I guess about 30 years, I said, I'm not frying any more chicken for you, baby, because it's not good for you. And he said, you must be crazy. I will eat out. But his mother had six or seven children, 
during the Depression, he never ate in a restaurant. So he had to become a vegetarian. And by the grace of God, he lives to be 83. I'm so glad you're asking questions. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Walaikum salam. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Thank you so very much. You have made my day so special. And I don't charge anybody to come and talk. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? Yes. Are we audible? Okay, awesome. So I was saying that it was an honor to do that work because shortly after filming that and uh, the way Spirit would have it, we had our first meeting in Atlanta with our, our cohort partners um, and our cohort class for our first uh, workshop retreated. And as we were flying back to Houston, before we could get back, she, she transitioned. So that's why we know that this work is so important for us to do the work that we're doing. And uh, we are right now in uh, this restaurant called Sunshines, which is named after the elder who will be, uh, the, the youth will be interviewing soon. Um, his daughter now owns his uh, restaurant, but he's a legacy in Houston. And I didn't want to give too much away before that we can share more about that. Uh, are we willing to continue to show some more? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Four more. All right, so before we go into the live interview, we're going to have four more videos for you to see, which one is going to lined up. All right, you can just go ahead and play the next one based on all this. Yeah, this is Mr. Sunday Night, and we're from the Extraordinary Elders Film, Film Project. Project. And, and today, today we are interviewing Miss Cloud slash our neighbor. So, Miss Cloud, tell us about yourself. I'm an old lady. <laughs> I'm 98 years old, and I live by myself. So, I would love for you girls to come over to see me sometime. How much has Sunnyside changed since you came here? Oh, it's changed a whole lot. When I came to Sunnyside, I was the only house on the from, 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 from here to the public. But what did you do when you were our age? When I when I was your age, I had to walk about ten miles to school, and then uh, there we get to school with, and we made our own fire in, in one time. Your own fires? It, uh, oh yeah, we, we had to. We, 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 we all gathered up wood and took, took it inside the building, made our fires, and then at, at 12 o'clock we had our lunch. We said, you all get out of school early. Uh, so we, 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 we didn't get out until 4 o'clock. School was much different than it was when I was going to school. But when I went to school, we only had one big school. And it, it went from the first until the 12th grade. When you came out in 12th grade, that was considered the first year of college, boys' dormitory and a girls' dormitory. Then we, we had a football team, basketball team, and then before we went to school, we, we, our school didn't, didn't start in, in the, the, until the 1st of September. When it started in the 1st of September, because we had to pick cotton, we picked cotton in the field until we got to picking cotton 
them ones was one school. So you all have it, have it real good now. You got to ride to school and to ride back home and wherever else you have to go. But when I was a child, the old age coming up, I had to walk. And as I, how cold it was, or how rainy it was, we had to walk to school. We had to walk back home from school. When we got home from school, we had chores to do. We had to go outside and, and cut wood, pick up chips to make the fire the next morning. And uh, y'all, y'all just have a y'all have a wonderful time now. But we didn't have that when I was coming out. I was one of eight boys and four girls, and my childhood memories are vivid of the interaction that we had at that time. My father had a peculiar method of toning down the frustrations of our brothers. Every Sunday he would put boxing gloves on us and we would box at each other, thus cutting down on the frustration. So once we had boxed it out, it was over. We were fussing with each other. I remember my experiences of going to Sunday school and to church and at that time we went to church all day long. We were in church in the morning, we were in church in the afternoon, and we were in church in the evening, every single Sunday. And church, of course, was nearby. It was right around the corner. We didn't have to walk far to get to church. Did you ever want to be a lawyer? No, I never wanted to be a lawyer, but somebody else wanted me to be a lawyer. So they said, you don't make a good lawyer. <laughs> But as early as nine, I had decided that I would be in the ministry, not a lawyer, but a preacher at nine years of age. Describe the difference between music in your time and now. Music in my time and music now. I don't know whether I would call music music now in light of the standards that we had long time ago. We have moved away from an appreciation to a classical music to the acceptance of music as it is. We were trained in the classic tradition. Have you ever encountered racism and how did you handle it? Well. It may seem odd, but I was raised in an area of town that was called First Ward, right off of Houston Avenue. And I was raised in a neighborhood that was mixed with Jewish, Italians, Hispanics, and blessed, Puerto Ricans, and you name it. And we kids in our neighborhood, we all played together. But uh, I encountered uh, the racism on the buses when I was a child. But other than that, I really didn't have any, any problems. Everybody seems that's odd, but I didn't in my neighborhood, we didn't. What was it like growing up for you from? The house that I was raised in, I don't know, you all probably have ever seen the movie, was like the Godfather's house. A big house, like a, in, in, a Venetian style house. We had a huge round porch that you could sit on. Now, the prop, they bought the property and they have all big high rides over that area. Basically, it was fun um, growing up. Oh, we didn't have all of this technology that we have now. <laughs> this is a, if the technology is great to have the technology that we have today, but the people were closer. And neighbors with kids, neighbors would look out for kids mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. 
you couldn't do anything. The neighbors would tell your parents yeah. <laughs> if they saw you doing something that, that they know you weren't supposed to do. But no one wants you to say anything about their kids now. It's almost lost. Hello, my name is Inaya. I'll be interviewing Coach John for the Extraordinary Elders Film Project. So the first question is, what's your name? Where are you from? And tell me something about yourself that you would like the youth to know. My name is John Wilkerson, born and raised in San Antonio, Texas. I've been in Houston for about 35, 45 years. But the thing I want people to know, I love kids and I love working with kids. I, it's the biggest, biggest joy of my life when I get to work with kids and help them develop. Who are your parents? My parents were great parents. Uh, I stayed with my mother and father in San Antonio. That's where I was born and raised. I went into the Army. Uh, it was the best thing ever happened to me. It helped me mature. It helped me find out what I wanted to do in my life. And I just enjoyed being in the service. I was in Germany for about three years, and I learned a lot about Germany and about other parts of the world. How did you get into tennis, and why do you love the sport so much? Okay, getting into tennis, uh, I didn't. At first, I did not want to play tennis. I thought tennis, I thought tennis was for girls. I played baseball, and I was pretty good at baseball. And my brothers would play every week. And when I came up, I beat all of them. I never played before. Then they told me, "You ought to go out for the team." I went out for the team. I beat everybody on the team and the coach. I won the district and state my first year ever playing tennis. So I was hooked, I really loved it. And look, here's a, here's a baseball bat, I could hit a baseball. And then when they put a racket in my hand, here's a racket. If I can hit the baseball with this, uh, this is so much bigger. So that was easy to play tennis. I loved it and I love, like I said before, it's nothing better than working with kids and helping them to develop. Hi, I'm Sarai. Hi, I'm Safia. Sunshine every day. <laughs> um, we are the Extraordinary um, Elders Project, and today we'll be interviewing Mr. Um, Sunshine. So Mr. Sunshine will be asking you a few questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we get to know Let's get to know him. Um, here's some questions. Uh, I'm before we um, ask any questions. I'm 14. I'm 10. I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember okay. your age? No. <laughs> age ain't nothing but a number. Life should be about you being able to do everything you can for the body you have. Okay. So, um, here's some uh, when did Sunshine open? Sunshine started. Sunshine never been closed. Sunshine was over at Kenny. I was doing a, a function event for Shape Center for the African naming ceremony. Six o'clock I started, two o'clock the naming ceremony was still going on. And I started wondering, what's my name going to be? So I go home that night, and during my little sleep, I kept seeing the sunshine. I woke up that morning, and the sun was coming through the window right over my bed. Been living in the place for 13 years, but the first time I knew, I realized that the sun came in my window every night. So I said, that's the name I'm going to be. I'm going to be caught up in the window for sunshine. OK. <laughs> How many restaurants do you have? This is the only one. How did you create Sunshines? It create, like I say, you come to realize the sun is always, is always bending. In my effort to share my information with other folks, 
up my house that he needs three meals a day. What do we call the first name in the morning? Breakfast. And then you spell it B R E A K is what? Okay. F A S T. Fast. So why do we say breakfast? And why no teaching chest I do the same breakfast? So I come to realize that the school system is setting us up just to get a JOB. And as I began to learn about the body, like if you're fasting and you're sleeping, when you get up in the morning, the body's in the eliminate mode. And during the eliminate mode, the body releases toxins. Kidney release through the bladder, that's the urine. The lungs give up the toxin. We call it brushing our teeth. The skin, we shower. And the colon release the solid waste. So with us going to school, not realizing you're not going to have anything in your life that's better than the body you have. And the school is not taking you to the body. What did you think you were going to be when you grew up? I grew up in a sugar can plantation. My daddy was a tractor driver. And I thought, what tractor am I going to have? <laughs> Right now, I bought a piece of land in Eagle Lake, and I'm in the process of buying my second tractor. <laughs> and that is to grow my own food. Okay. I'll be about 20. I feel good because sometimes it takes what's happening for the individual to wake up and realize what they had. You know, 2020, especially with the pandemic, you have a body that has everything you need for you. So when you realize that you're fasting at night while you're sleeping, and you get up after every fast, the body automatically goes into the eliminating mode. In the eliminating mode, your body cannot take in anybody. So your eliminated mode normally lasts from 4 a.m. to 12 noon. So with the pandemic here, all you need to do is extend your eliminated mode from 4 in the morning until 8 at night. Eliminated foods are fruit juice and water. So how do you feel, what do you do during your free time? All times of free. To do, to do every day, when you get up in the morning and walk into the bathroom, you should look in that mirror and ask the question in that mirror, what is it I need to do? and do those things that your body needs. The schooling and the education that you're getting is teaching you how to take care of the system. You're not going to have anything that's better than the body that you have. So do those things for the body. Okay. How do you feel about the fact that Donald Trump has COVID-19? That's the question. Donald Trump give me no feelings. In fact, do he have it? He actually does. He well, got like I don't days ago. It. I don't believe it. But no. But so Donald good. Trump has been living for himself. Can't you imagine a couple weeks or months from now before the election that he comes and apologize to you and say, I'm sorry for the way I treated the pandemic. Never gonna happen. <laughs> I have a dollar. Okay, just pay attention. He's gonna do what it takes to win the election. Okay. And like I said, 
why should you worry about the pandemic when you have a body that can take care of that? Okay. What would you do if you had? Don't talk louder and talk to me. What would you do if you had an, an unlimited amount of money for yourself personally, your business, and your family? I do the same thing I'm doing now. Money don't make love. Money is a tool. You use it for things that you need, for things that you need to get to others. So that's one thing about the pandemic in the world that you're living in today. I said I grew up on the farm. Maybe we need to go back to the farm and start growing our own food. And remove the need for the house and the car and take care of the body. But your great grandmother was on the farm, 12 to 20 children in the family. Everybody had a garden. My grandmother never could send me to the store to buy anything. You go down to Sister Mary, get the such a thing. Stop by Brother John, get the such a We shared our garden and girls. We had no children. No children. We had no people. Right now, we are a race of people. That's a good thing that we did now. Say, why not? I was a typical black male working, working at the space center, get off from work, and got caught up in this thing with happy hour. Why do we just take an hour out of the day and go to happy hour? Or once a week we go to happy hour? Every day should be happy. So I found that I was misusing the body. I decided to investigate to see how can I do. So I hooked up with a brother, Dick Gregory, and learned how to fast. Fasting is so important that you do it every 24 hours. Fasting is so important that you do it every 24 hours. So learn how to fast and your body will appreciate it. What is your favorite part about the restaurant? All of it. It's always nice to see people that's somewhat concerned of how they consume food because it's very important that the basic that you are faced with every morning now. From the, from the bedroom to the bathroom. And those four organs, kidney, colon, lungs, and skin. You have to clean up those every day. So when you eat food like this, you are blessed when you go to the bathroom that you get good examination. Everybody you know that have a sickness. And one of the worst ones is cancer, diabetes, arthritis. But when I look at them now through the iridology that I do, I see that the bowel system is not there. So why should you worry about cancer if your bowel system is not there, which is the sewage system of the body? There's no disease in the clean body. Mr. Sunshine, why, why did you choose to have a restaurant in Houston? Uh, before I put the restaurant in Houston, I was going to Arizona and North Carolina doing retreats on the weekend. And I would come back and open the store Monday through Friday, get on the road and go do the retreats again. And when I got my daughter involved, I was more into educating the people about 
a tocar en el Zucker. Hay un siguiente punto de este mismo club que me alegra. El Zucker es todo lo que se ve. Yo diría que no me lo he visto. Yo no sé lo que se ve. Pero eso es lo que se ve. Yo estoy doing my thing, like iridology, consultation, and just try to get people informed. Don't look to me, look to your body, ask your body sometimes what you need to do for it. Look in that mirror in the morning and talk to that person you see. And in particular, When you walk into the restaurant in the morning, look at your facial expression. Coming out of the restroom, out of the restroom, look at that facial expression. If you brush your teeth, wash your face, and if you ain't come out and the balls move, you got a happy, you got happiness on your face when you look at that mirror. But if the flowers don't move in the morning, that's a frown on your face. <laughs> Something is not right. So your body got the answers for you. you. Always look to you in your body. If you were able to see your younger self, what would you tell them? If I was able to see who? Your younger, younger self. self. What would you tell them? I see myself all the time. Like, your when younger you're like, self. Like when you're like, You are in school. I believe that education is the life that you live. So to look at the life that you live, you got to go back and look at yourself crawling on the floor. And when you look at yourself crawling on the floor, do you know of anybody that did not crawl on the floor sucking on the bottom? Do you know of anybody? What's so important about that? We all did it. So you have to spend that time in going back and look at the life that you live. Because you respond to things that happen in your life. So if you, if you have a question of what you should do, go back and look at your life. And that's why when you go back and look at, look at the baby crawling on the floor, You see happiness. The baby is so happy and just moving all the time. Don't you want to do that? So look at what the baby put in. What's the baby? What's the baby get the food from? All the bottom and nipple. It's all liquid. So what happens when you take in the liquid? Body. Mm -hmm. It can go straight to the bloodstream. You chew food, you chew food that's solid, but for the body to use what you chew when it gets into the small intestine, it has to be liquid. So you have to practice what happens when you just put in the liquid. You smile better. You eliminate better. You love better. And that's what life is about, is being happy. Okay. Here's the last question. What advice would you like to give to kids my age? Kids your age. Understand fasting. Listen, understand liquid fast and water fast. And a lot of parents don't talk about it, but in reality, when the sperm and the egg meet up, nine months in water, you stay the sperm and the egg nine months in water, and then here you pop up. What's so important about water? It's hydrated. Keep it hydrated. And water, water is the first essence that the body needs. 
So in your life, what you're looking for, instead of me or school telling you what to do, when you gonna do your water baths? Now? Remember, water got you here. Mm -hmm. But you have to prepare because water can give you any information that you wish to have. Just like taking water. Okay. Everything starts with a thought, right? Mm -hmm. Water will give you your I actually have one more question. So I watched a documentary and it was called Heal with my mom. And it was about how our emotions and how we can affect our body, the emotional state and what diseases and things that we have. So do you believe that our how we think and how our emotions can affect our body and lifestyle? Definitely. This is a complete system, is the body. Everybody copies of the body. The automobile that you ride in now, and somebody studied the body to come up with automobile. So your emotion is, if you pay attention, the little example I use about when you enter the bathroom and when you come out, what is your emotion when you go and don't have no elimination? Um, I'm worried about why I can't be so restful. Yeah, so there should be no worry, right? You should be able to take care and do those things that the body needs. So when you get up in the morning, and I'm speaking from, from me, I used to get up and go to the bathroom, and the only thing on my mind used to be to do those things to get to the job. Now I realize my job is to take care of this body. So you have to change and understand who controls the job. And if you get hooked on the job, somebody's controlling you. So with the pandemic as it is now, happiness and people that don't have the job and look at the many years they went to school to get the job and they don't have the job. So where are their emotions? Where are they now? Oh, depressed. You said it's depressed, sir. Depressed. <laughs> so crying, probably drinking liquor, drinking all the sodas away. And, and it's something about you and the body. If you seek to help your body and the next person by it. Thank you for being an extraordinary elder. Thank you, Sunshine, for being an extraordinary elder. Thank you for being you. Thank you. And I look to see you when you get to be a elder. Okay. I'll be here watching you. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. My suggestion. What's the going on? Why? What's the going on? Oh. Maybe turn around and look at us. So that was the uh, the interview segment, live interview. So now we're going to give it and take it on now to the interview via Zoom with our Roots family members, with our elder Mother Doris, and our youth village representative, Zaire. Mm -hmm. And if y'all have any questions for Baba Sunshine, when it's over, we will have a session for Q&A. And for those who may not know what iridology is, iridology really is the ability to read one's iris and tell you all your business. Tell you things you haven't told anybody. It's true. Ms. Mother Doris. Hello, beautiful. Mm-hmm. <sighs>
Hi, my name is Zaire and I am seven years old in the second grade. I am from Atlanta, Georgia. Could you tell us your name, where you're from, and a little bit and a little bit about your family history? I'd be glad to. Thank you, Zaire. How are you today, Zaire? Good. Good. Me too. Me too. I am very glad to be here. I'm thankful to Boosie and Mark for having us as interview people on this event and thankful to all the Roots people. Now, what was that question? Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> My name is Doris Diosa Juanita Davenport, sometimes Mama D, sometimes Dr. Davenport. My pronouns are person and per. I was born and raised in Northeast Georgia in the Cherokee homeland colonized as Gainesville and Cornelia, Georgia. I was born in Gainesville actually and raised in Cornelia. And I left to go to college when I was 16. And now I'm back home in Cornelia, happily back home. I'm the oldest of seven siblings. Did I say that? But both my parents are deceased and I've been attending Roots since the uh, mid 1990s. Thank you. My mom said I could ask you how old you are. Is that true? That is true. Thank you. Are you asking? Yes. <laughs> Let's see. I think I already told you I was 150. Yeah. Not really. I'm only 71. What do you think of that? What does it sound like to you? It sounds cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. You're, you're welcome. When, when you were in school, what was your favorite subject? Oh, I like that question. I had lots of favorites, actually. One of and my why? first, huh? And why? why? One of my first favorites was music because when I was in elementary school, we actually had an elementary school band with flutes and bells. That's why I wanted to play those bells. <laughs> I so wanted to play the bells I hear. So I like that. Then we went somewhere else and I wanted to build things. Industrial arts were my favorite, but then I liked math. And finally, I liked literature and English. So see, in school, people kept telling me how smart I was, Zaire. So I, oh, you can do it, you can do it. And since that's what they said, I did it. That, that's nice. <laughs> well, what would you like people to know about you? Um, there are a lot of things, Zaire, but it depends on who the people are. So I think because you are my people today, what I think I'd like you to know about me is I'm very glad to be here. I feel very energized just being here. Today is a wonderful day. Thank you. When you were a little girl, what did you want to be when you grew up? Okay, I will tell you the truth because it's you, Zaire. When I was a little girl, one of the first things I wanted to be or to do was to fly. I wanted to know how to fly. I thought I could. I did. I really did. Okay, so I realized I couldn't do that. Then I just thought if I could create alternate worlds, that could be fun. Then I wanted to be a writer and a teacher. And I've been a writer since I was 12. And I've been a teacher for oh, 40 or 50 years at colleges. Thank you for that question. Nice. And you're welcome. <laughs> is, there any, is there anything you would like kids my age to know? Hmm. Kids your age, I would hope that you would know 
how to enjoy yourselves. I think that's important. But after that, I learned something the other day, Zaire, at one of our sessions called W-A-I-T. That means, why am I talking? I like that, and it's easy to remember. But I got a, an addition to that, which is W-A-I-L. That means, why am I living? I think that's a good question for everybody to ask. Not now, not today, Zaire, but when you get a little older, ask a question. Ask it so you can find an optimistic, positive reason. It might be, I'm living to make up my bed. I'm living to go for a walk. <laughs> I'm living to go hug my mother. You know, like, we don't know, but you know, why am I living? Because people have reasons, yeah. Thank you. In closing, is there anything you would like to tell us? Thank you. Yes, there really is. And, and this is for you. I want to tell you this. It's a long answer, but please listen. Zaire, this is for you. Zaire, we are Roots kin because you are third generation for me, Roots kin. Um, excuse me? Mm -hmm. What is the kin supposed to mean? Ah, thank you. I like the way you do that because you know roots, alternate roots, right? Yes. Yes. So kin, like kinfolk, right? Um, what is that supposed to mean? Relative, a relative. Like you are kin to Marquetta. She's your mother. You have a father. You have cousins, kin, family. Yes, I understand. Okay. Thank you for stopping me. I was on a roll one. <laughs> so, so we, you and I, you particularly are the third generation in one family of my roots kin, as in roots, because of our connections to Adora Dupre, your grandmother. I want to call her name with respect and love, Adora Dupre. She was one of the first positive influences for me at Roots was our Adora Dupre, Ashe, who has transitioned to join the elders. She was such a beautiful, effervescent black woman, a drummer, a storyteller, a healer, an inspirational activist and singer and dancer and African influenced fashionista with her dreads and Afro style. Am I getting a Marquetta? <laughs> <laughs> she was all of that. And she is Marquetta Dupre's mother. When I met Adora, I also met Marquetta, who at that time was seven or eight or nine. 15, 20 years later, she was. I, she was about your age, Jair, when I met Marquetta. Mm -hmm. She looked about like you, too. You have this questioning look on your face. Like, mm, mm. That was Marquetta, too. Always thinking, always interested in something. Anyway, 15 or 20 years later, I saw Marquetta at Roots with her own singing trio. Bet you didn't know that, Zaya. A few years later, she was doing some serious African dancing to Emma Tepp's drumming. Then, guess what? She came with that gift of you, Zaire. She brought you as a baby to annual Roots meeting. And you came to me gladly, and one day you came querulously, and you said, and I said, I'll sing you a song. You were in my lap on the porch. I said, Zaire, I'll sing you a song. I'll sing you a sleeping song, a sleeping song, a sleeping song. Remember that song? I'll sing you. And I taught it to Marquetta. I, I, don't, I don't really feel, I feel like I've heard it before, but I don't remember it. Because I feel like my mom's um, sung, sang it to me before, but I was littler, and and we were, and and that was one of my bedtime songs. But I for, but I forgot. You want to know it again? I, it's very easy. We can sing it now. You want to know it again? Sure. Yeah. This is all it is to it. Everybody, you can sing to. I'll sing you a happy song. A happy song, a happy song. I'll sing you, I'll sing you a happy song. I'll sing you a happy song.
theme song. Come on, Marquetta. La 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 la. It's kind of coming back now. Da 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 da. I'll sing you a happy song. Of all of you. Uh, root family people, you can change that to laughing, to sleepy. Dyer, when I sang it to you, I said sleepy. I sang it twice and you were asleep. Yeah, it's a good song for you. So I'm saying everybody, I'm saying simply, Boosie and Mark, I'm very grateful. I am gratified. I'm humbled and proud to be interviewed by our Roots sister, Adora's grandson, my roots daughter, niece Marquetta's son, Zaire, who is either my great great root grandson or my great great nephew, but you can to me, Zaire, you remember that name. Who among other things, they tell me, Zaire, you have been playing piano since age three. Now look at all that wonderful talent running through our family. May we all be enriched and creatively blessed in the sharing of this lineage. Forgive me if I talk too long. And again, gratitude to you, particularly Zaire. Thank you. That's what I would like to tell you in closing. Thank you so much, Mama Doris, for your time. And thank you for being an extraordinary elder. Uh, you're an extraordinary interviewer too. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so yeah, you're on. So we just want to thank everyone who took part in the Extraordinary Elders Film Project, period. Some of the, we cannot have done this work without the parents who brought their children every weekend for us to uh, do training for them. We appreciate the, the Denise Lopez from the Oriel Radio station. She was the one that gave them practice and taught them how to words and to articulate and how to watch their body language and things of that nature. So we're so grateful to her. And she did this while early on in her pregnancy as well. They were a beautiful little girl right now. So I was honored and thankful to her. And she used to be um, a partner with Zen, who was an angel in the community of Houston, an ancestor to us now. We love dearly. Um, and we want to thank all the elders that took part in our project. We want to thank all the tech people who helped us today to have uh, this project work out awesome for the day for our presentation. We want to thank the youth that took part in this today, as well as the extraordinary elders, Mother Mother Doris and uh, Barbara Sunshine, and to, to Inaya and to Rai and to Safi and to Zaire. Thank you so much, McQuitta. Again, all the parents that were not here to, to be thanked, we're so grateful to them all. I thank my partner, Dr. Fury. I thank uh, also Alternate Roots for blessing us with the partnership as a co op for Partners in Action, which gave us the, the main resources that we needed to get this project done to start it out, as, to say the least. And we just the beginning, we're just seeing the pilot of a continuation that we need to make legacy to continue to do this work because there's so many elders and so many stories and so many youths and the importance of intergenerational relationships when we have that then the work that Wu does around women being incarcerated and dealing with domestic violence and homelessness it helps those kind of issues if you have healthy relationships when you're young you'll know how to make healthier choices when you get older so this is one of the reasons why we want to do this work to show solutions this is a part of the solution to some of the problems that we have had as the people that gifts that we had that we have lost. So we want to open it up for any Q and A, if there are any questions and answers that you have for any of the uh, elders that took part today. 
for the youth that took part, as well as myself, or my partner, Mark, anyone has a question. Before you make, a, uh, before you ask, uh, anybody ask a question, Baba Sunshine would like to make a statement. I do a coding class every Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. The call-in number is 425-436-6327. The code is 685-043. And we speak a lot about what's happening with the pandemic. Holistic health, I'm so busy about it. Every Saturday morning. Can you repeat that again, Bob? Every Saturday morning, the call in number is 425-436-6327. The code is 685-043. We talk about holistic health and how to take care of your body. Let me get it one more time and I'll put it in the chat. The phone number. Four, two, five. Oh, somebody did it. Never mind. I think we're good. So is Wendy or anyone going to tell us if there are any questions? Do we have any um, more time for Q&A? If not, we can wrap it up. Uh, Mark, is there anything you want to share? What time is the Saturday call-in? 9.30 a.m. Central. 9.30 a.m. Central Time. Thank you. So, Mother Doris, is there anything that you wanted to sh uh, share in closing? Busi and your daughters, also third generation, everybody. I'm, I'm not neglecting or omitting everybody, anybody. I don't mean to. I'm simply proud and humbled to be a part of this project and of this um, roots. I mean, I knew you, I met Busi several years ago. Her two daughters came as toddlers. <laughs> I remember them too. And um, I'm just saying thank you. I got a chance to call our sister's name to remind her grandson that we are Roots kin. That's invaluable. I do hope some version of this project, Boosie, can continue at Roots, Boosie and Mark. I just thank you so very much. I'm just full of gratitude right now. Thank you. Thank you all. That's all I have. This is a question, Boosie. There's a question? Yeah. Um, what effects have you noticed about the children after these interaction with the extraordinary elders? Or how does it affect the children? How is it affected them? I think that they don't know yet how much is affected them. We will see later on. A lot of times the children, you plant seeds and then you see later on it comes out. Like how she asked the question, well, I was watching this documentary even so you never realize, you know, until later how much it has impacted them. But I, I feel that it's made them more um, have the ability to, they've always been very much on their points of view, but for some of them, who have a hard time speaking and learning how to speak out, I know it's been helpful for me to learn how to hear your voice more. And to answer, oh, yeah, I think we should let the, um, the children speak up and see, like, what was your experience? I'll go ahead and ask, why don't we interview, um, let's interview the children. So like, um, Safia, yeah. tell me about your experience. What, what, what elder um, stuck in your mind the most and, and how is it, what do you remember most about your experience working with well, interviewing elders? I'd say that my experience is pretty nice. I mean, even though I've always grew up liking to sing, dance, and I've always been on my voice a lot, it really helped me, making me a bit more, um, what's the word, like more interested in elders making me, because some, one of the ones that my sister um, interviewed was my um, tennis coach. And he was pretty nice, to be honest. And so uh, I, some of them 
I've had a connection with, some of them I've kind of known, and uh, some of them, and I, I don't remember everyone's names, to be honest. Um, I, I think, I guess you could say that I, it has affected me in some ways, and that it has made me want to know more about history or something of how our, and about our culture. How about you in the middle? What do you think? Say your name and, and what do you think? Yeah, about you? Um, Inaya. Um, it's nice to meet um different elders and learn from them from experience and uh, it's nice to see them before they pass away. I feel sad that, about um what's her name? Mama um Dimba. It was so upsetting to know that she passed away softly before she shed tears at her funerals. It was upset to see her go. And it's nice to see that um there are people that I was able to meet that are like almost in the hundreds. That's a uh, so tell us, like, you interviewed your el your um your neighbor. Did you ever did you learn something new that you didn't know before interviewing her about her? I didn't know um the rest of the block was like a bunch of people and stuff. Um, it's nice to know she's lived here more than I have. Her dogs are nice too. Yeah, I even let the dogs inside the video at the end. Well, is anything, if anybody has anything else to share, I think we're, we're pretty much. Okay, go ahead. Well, I hope that we see you again when you're long with the jury in the middle. What? It is. Sunshine day every day. There you have it. Closing remarks. Sunshine every day. If anything, the, you will get the, this. Is always the, remember that phrase. The, the, you. I think we were trying to ask if Zaire wanted to share anything back. Um, uh, about... Yeah, what did you what did you get out of this process, Zaya? It was it was fun, nice, like ex it was exciting. <laughs> um what was exciting about it? You were looking forward to it, right? Yeah. Why you were excited to ask questions. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited to ask questions and like, uh, uh, it was. Um, uh, uh, uh. Say whatever um, you want to say. You don't have to say anything you don't want to say. What's in your head? Uh, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, do you have any more questions? I think we had one other question uh, from Gilin. Do you see that one, Amy? Yes. So uh, Gilin says, wonderful work. The question is, what was the most difficult of anyone to be filmed? What was the most difficult? I think, um, 
I wouldn't say anybody was difficult. It's like, but some, you know, when, when they reach the apex of their, their time on earth, um, they have the recycled memories that they just kind of, they, they stay in those memories, those time periods. So when you're interviewing them, um, they might still be in that time period versus in the time that we're interviewing them. So, and that was kind of um, obvious with Mother Denver. And it was also um, another elder who's uh, Dr. Washington, the chiropractor. We didn't just show his video, but he's um, he would say the same thing over and over again, which actually worked considering sometimes he'd say it better than the first time. So like when you talk about his life, that's pretty much the biggest, ops, the biggest, um, I guess, hurdle. Um, but then it comes down to editing and moving stuff around and getting the, the story that they're really trying to say and make it a cohes cohesive um, presentation for anybody's viewing it. So we worked it out, to make a long story short. Any type of obstacle we came across, we worked it out. Yeah, for me, I think the biggest obstacles was just scheduling, mm -hmm. be able to get, you know, the time that was a, that was a, available for everyone to meet, to be able to have, you know, because children are not showing up on their own, they're not the right. children, right? So they, you need to, it to be uh, a time that's available for the parents as well as the as the, the elder that we're interviewing, but to be cohesive. That was one of the most challenging parts for me, I felt. And other than that, it flowed. Anybody else? We here. Any more questions? So we've enjoyed this um, experience, this presentation. Like Boosie said, we are just at the beginning of this. Any surprises, thanks, things you didn't expect? Hmm. Um, I'm I mean, you know, I, I, I think when you're working with children, I think the thing for me is that the, the reminder is to remember that they're children. So you may go over different things over and over about uh, a protocol or body language or what have you. And you have to remember that their patience is but so, it's like my husband would say, it's like herding cats, right? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know, that was a reminder that keep reminding myself that these are my children, they're children, work with them and, and that was the reminder. Even though you know they're children. The thing, you know, yeah, the biggest thing is like, you know, like let's say you have a, a shy child that doesn't like to like talk really loud, bless you. So it's kind of like, um, first of all, what, um, what kind of, what were you like when you were kid? He's like, say, can you speak up? Okay. First of all, what would you like when you were a kid? <laughs> So that would happen a lot. So a lot of times I just have to move the mic, you know, you throw in the towel, just move the microphone close to them and, um, you know, kind of roll with it and then have a conversation with them afterwards so they can learn. How can we hear you? What's what's in your heart? What's in your mind? If you're not like saying it loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what's the blessing about it is that we embarked on this project before COVID. Mm -hmm. So this is the first interview we've done Post-COVID, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would that would have been an interesting question to have asked if this was going on at the time, if it was in the beginning of the project at the at a time of COVID, because we've had a lot of uh, awesome response from other organizations who would like us to do some work with them, um, and we're we're having to navigate and figure it out based on the day of in age of pandemic so um so that's in moving forward and and oh yeah let me take that back that ha that was the biggest that's been the biggest challenge that because we were looking to do this big you know event and mm -hmm. show screenings have the elders there have the youth sure there, do yeah. big old. so yeah that's been the biggest challenge that the pandemic came just when we were going to uh begin to to drop the project and promote it and do the work and do our first screening. So it ended up being an online um, showcase. Right. Or, you know, great episodes. Course. Right. Yeah. As opposed to, we were later going to do that after doing some screenings and some things first. So because you know. we don't know when it's going to happen, it's going to be 
pretty much a great web series now. We just kind of morphed it into that. Which, you know, follow us on um, social media and webs uh, site. Extraordinary Elders. Everything is Extraordinary Elders. Extraordinaries.com on Instagram and Facebook. Extraordinary Elders. Via Vimeo. Yes. So, and I wanted to say in closing that is, uh, I want to thank um, Audrey, how's the daughter who owns the restaurant? Arga. Arga. Arga's, um, who's the owner of Sunshine, and her her husband, her king, who came and uh, helped us to be able to be in the back where the outside part of the restaurant is. And um, I'm grateful to them being one of the pioneer. Well, I, I don't, I, before, before him, I don't think that there were any melanin dominant vegan or vegetarian restaurants. So he was definitely here before most people and still there's only a few of us. And so as we talk about the, what's going on right now, the pandemic, the uprising that has taken place, we know that the best protest is protest without dollar. So if you come to Houston, please come to Sunshine's and, and spend some dollars, spend some money. The food is delicious, delicious, delicious food. I've been thinking about the whole time. That, so we <laughs> working on being focused. Um, and I actually would like to walk y'all around the front so you can see there's that right now they have a market going on with vendors outside in the front and um and delicious um you know they have vitamins and all kinds of other things it's not just the food it's, it's you know herbs and fruits and things of that nature so it's right off of um sophomore if you look it up it's sunshine vegetarian what's the exact address 3102 ost 3102 ost Old Spanish, Old Spanish Yes. So we want to thank you all. Thank everyone again for all your support. We're looking to continue to do this work. So we're going to be looking for continued resources. When they ask for some of the challenges, you know, the challenges always is the money. You got to get the money to do this work, right? So thank you all. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Indy. And, you know, everyone who was a part of helping us get it together to have our presentation today. And uh, it was an honor to uh, be a part of Roots Week 2020. In spite of whatever challenges that we're, we're going through right now on the planet, we're here. Thank you so much, Boosie. Thank you to um, all the presenters uh, this afternoon. We're so, so grateful for this exchange. I got teary-eyed actually between the the elders and the children. So beautiful. Um, please show some affirmation and gratitude in the chat. Um, and yes. Mel, I'm going to step in for just a second because I wanted to, um, Boosie and Mark were, um, I was able to do their site visit for the Partners in Action. Um, and Amy, you were there too, yeah? Um, and being able to go to SHAPE and meet with the elders and just what they're doing um, in that center every single day. Um, I think that it was so important to Roots to be able to partner on this project because what we understand is time is limited. And as much as we want for our people to be with us forever, we're very clear that time is limited in this realm. And Boosie kept um, pushing the urgency of getting these things recorded now. And I'm not gonna cry because I cried. I've been crying all day. And I cried when Doris and Zaire were doing their song. And it's cleansing. I used to try to hide my tears. I don't anymore. It's, uh, it's cleansing. But how important it was to get these things recorded in the moment. The urgency of getting these words from our elders. The, the urgency of having a conversation between young people and elders before they exited this realm. And so I'm so glad, uh, grateful that we were able to partner uh, on this Partners in Action and that we were able to capture, especially because Boosie, I think we were together. Weren't we together either on the phone or in person when the mother passed? And yes. to be able to get that interview. So we were at the yeah. conference. That's what I was sharing. We were at our first right. cohort conference when she transitioned. While I, we were together. That's right. That's right. And then, so um, 
And yeah. So I was I'm, as I'm flying back, she had just transitioned. Yep. So it's so important to do these. And this is just my, this will be my, my plug for all of us, for all the elders in our communities, are the elders in, that are kin to us, Mama Doris, that we have these conversations with them, whether it's recording on a, on a phone or whatever. So we have their voices and their stories with us. So I just wanted to say that I'm grateful for the, the urgency of now. Grand ending. Absolutely. Tafia says, grand ending. She's get blowing you bubbles. Yes, yes for the bubbles. Yes for the bubbles and the grand ending. And I'll toss it back to Mel and Amy. Let's give us some gratitude and affirmation for all who supported this session. It yes, was amazing. Thank you, it was history. Thank you, Tech. Thank you, Tech. Thank you, everyone. The Tech team, Dr. Oh, Langa, you, thanks for holding me down, for interpretation, the REIT staff. And thanks to all of you for your comments and your affirmations. But before we close, two more things. Let's hear a message from our Roots community. Also, the new voting member voting and process will take place tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central and 3 p.m. Eastern Time. If you are interested in voting and becoming a voting member, you can go to our website for details or email membership at alternateroots.org. We appreciate you and we'll see you this evening on the live stream at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern for our Utes hosted late night. Anyone can sign up through the form that was in your daily email or we're also gonna drop it in the chat right here so you can link to it directly. We're not gonna drop it in the chat? I'm gonna drop it right now. <laughs> As I say, we are, we just gotta yeah. find it. Oh, right here, I got it, put it on. I got it, we got it. Bubbles. Mel, thanks Mel. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks again for joining us today for this awesome session. We'll close out with a video from. The suspense. <laughs> Lisa Q Mount here, coming to you from New Orleans, aka Bulbancha. Uh, I just want to talk to you for a second about this I... thing. <laughs> and as a reminder, values, oh. beliefs that guide our behavior, like say... but value singular. What a thing is worth. Will you think with me for a second about what roots is worth to you? About what you've gotten out of this organization and whether it matches what you've put into it. I know for myself, much more has come to me from being a part of Roots than I have inserted into it in terms of money and time. The rewards are huge. And so I give every month. I have my little bank, send a little check off to Roots and Paige cashes it. Will you join me please in that? Will you think about giving $5 a month? Will you think about giving $5 a week? Hey, a couple of us, we can give $5 a day. Because really, what's it worth to you? And for those of you who are new here, you got in free. Please consider giving at least the cost of an imaginary admission to this digital event. Hoping this finds you well and thriving and in a position to give your money to the things that you care about. Go for it on the regular. I'm sure there'll be details telling you how. Many thanks. So glad to see you all.